Hi everyone, welcome back to our next installment of Ask Kate, brought to you by the Children's Tumor Foundation. Today I want to try to tackle a topic that is a little challenging because there's a lot that I won't be able to explain probably to everyone's satisfaction, but hopefully that will encourage you to ask some questions either by leaving a comment uh, below or by contacting me at my email. So today I want to talk a little bit about plexiform neurofibromas, which is a type of tumor that occurs in some people living with NF1. So a plexiform, which is what I'll call it just to keep it simple, um, these are larger, more extensive tumors. They grow from the nerves and they can occur anywhere in the body. But unlike cutaneous neurofibromas, these are often found in very young children. Some clinicians even believe they may be congenital, meaning that you're born with them, but we can't always see them initially. Um, neurofibromas uh, may be located around the eye socket, face, arm, leg, back, chest, abdomen. Um, they can be internal, where, the, where we can't really see them unless we do a scan or they start to cause a problem, or they can be external. Now, the thing about plexiforms that can be kind of scary for people with NF1 is a couple of things. One is that these tumors tend to slowly but continuously grow throughout the lifetime. We can see an uptick in growth during puberty, but in general, a lot of times the plexiform will continue to grow. It just grows very slowly, but because of that, it will continue to cause problems to the structures that it's um, sitting on, wrapped around, uh, anything that's involved. So that's one thing about plexiforms that is very difficult. The other is that while a plexiform is a benign tumor, meaning it's not cancerous, they don't always stay that way. So plexiforms we know um, are at risk of becoming malignant, which means that it is turns into a form of cancer, which is very dangerous. When this happens, it's called a malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor, and shorthand is MPNST. Um, these are um, very aggressive tumors, and they need to be taken very seriously. Currently, there are not very reliable tests for knowing when a plexiform has converted into a malignant tumor. And so if you have a plexiform, it's just important that you speak with your doctor about signs and symptoms that you should be looking for um, and anything that you need to be able to report to your doctor when it comes to changes in that tumor. So now that we've talked a little bit about what a plexiform is, I'd like to just do a little bit of sharing a previous uh, question and answer session that I did with some NF parents. And they asked some great questions and I thought I would just repeat them here and then give uh, the answers that I gave to them. So one question was whether there are any clinical trials for treating these types of tumors, since we know that we don't have a lot of great options for treatment, although I'm going to circle back to that because we do have some exciting news uh, that hopefully you've heard about already. But in general, the, there's a lot of um, clinical trials and research being done on plexiforms, and the question was, how do you find out about that? So previously, I've talked a little bit about clinical trials, and my answer is the same. The best thing to start with is to talk to your NF doctor, to ask them if there's any trials that they, they are aware of or even participating in at their center that you could get involved in. Also, you can check out the NF Registry. There's a clinical trials tab at the top of the page, and there's a complete listing of relevant NF research trials that are happening. The final place you can check is clinicaltrials.gov, which has a great search engine where you can actually search both for NF1 but also plexiform neurofibromas to see what studies are happening or have happened recently. Another question I got that day that I thought was interesting was um, a mother wondering how you can tell the difference between um, a subdermal neurofibroma and a plexiform neurofibroma. Now, subdermal neurofibromas often do feel different than other types of cutaneous uh, neurofibromas. They're still benign. They still um, aren't going to grow significantly the way that a plexiform can, um, and they aren't going to—they aren't at risk for converting into a malignancy. But they will have a soft, squishy texture that can be a little concerning, um, and and so parents a lot often will be worried about that. Um, a plexiform also has a unique texture often, where maybe you'll even see hair growing from it, um, and that can be an indication of something to talk to your doctor about. Um, but a subdermal, even any really cutaneous neurofibroma can be painful. So again, um, if you notice that you have an, uh, a tumor that is painful, I would absolutely talk to your doctor about it. But if you're noticing pain because it's when you when you touch it or bump it, um, or if it's on your bra line or where your pants hit your waist, um, that can be very normal and not necessarily alarming with any type of neurofibroma. 
But the most important thing that I told this mother and that I would tell anyone is that if you have a new tumor or an old tumor that seems different to you in some way, with size, pain, the way it looks or feels, then absolutely reach out to your NF doctor and start that conversation to make sure that uh, further testing or imaging isn't needed. So speaking of imaging, another question I get is how often do you need to scan a plexiform? So generally, if you've got a stable plexiform um, that is you know, growing slowly but not causing significant issues in terms of function, uh, we will see an MRI done about once a year. If they see significant growth, if you have new symptoms, if it's encroaching on your, your function in some way, whether it's affecting the eye socket or if it's in your neck and affecting the way you're you know, at risk of affecting your ability to breathe or there's lots of different things that can happen. Um, they may want to do scans more often. Now the nice thing about an MRI is that it doesn't involve any radiation, so the risks are quite minimal. Of course, if we're talking about children and they need to be sedated for the MRI, then sedation carries its own risks, and that's an important conversation to have with your provider when you're kind of weighing out um, the risks and benefits of, of doing an MRI of a particular tumor. Um, I also get asked a lot about the way that they grow. Um, so in general, as with anything in NF, there's no hard and fast rule. Generally, we, we see that plexiforms will continue to grow slowly throughout the lifetime. And again, you may see an increase in the rate, rate of growth during puberty, um, but we expect them to continue to grow throughout your life. Uh, now, again, there are always exceptions to this. There are people who live with a plexiform in a particular area of their body. It hardly ever gets bigger or maybe it gets bigger for a while and then it stops growing. Um, and that's one of the reasons that it's so important for us to keep researching these tumors because there is such a variation in how they behave, which makes it more difficult to know how to treat and when to intervene. So the next thing I want to mention is pain management. So plexiforms are notorious for causing a lot of pain. If you have one in your hip, it might be painful to walk. In your shoulder, it might be painful to use your arms. Um, if it's in your back, that can cause all kinds of different um, pain issues. So one thing I encourage families to talk to their doctors about is a pain management team. Now, if the pain is pretty manageable on your own and maybe you're just using some over-the-counter treatments occasionally, that's great. Uh, but for some people with a plexiform, there is significant debilitating pain. And in that case, I want to encourage you to try to reach out and find out about a pain management team. Um, this is usually a group of people that involves a physician, nurses, social workers, natural uh, medicine practitioners like massage therapists or acupuncturists um, that can do all kinds of things that I hadn't even heard of some of these things you know, when it comes to treating and addressing significant pain that can come from plexiforms. And the nice thing about these options is that it can reduce or even take away your need to use more serious um, uh, medications for pain, which, which is always a, a, a good thing if possible. So another question I get a lot is, why is there such a hesitation to remove plexiforms? A lot of times I have mothers say, well, if my child has a plexiform that's relatively small right now and we know it's going to grow, why don't we just take it out? So the biggest reason for this hesitation is because these are really complex tumors. Generally, even when they're small, they're involving all of the vital structures that they're touching. So wrapping around themselves around muscles, nerves, vessels, things that we simply can't remove. So often a resection, which is what we call a surgery on one of these uh, tumors, can result or put you at risk for a loss of function or other new symptoms like new pain, um, or again, that, that loss of function is a big one. So it's really a matter of weighing risks and benefits, and that's a, that's a conversation to have with the surgeon, um, really with your whole medical team, um, about you know, what, what would be the benefit of operating and what risks does this carry. Um, but what the, where the plexiform is and what structures it involves will obviously play a big role in how it's managed or treated. So because the surgery on plexiforms is not only complicated, but often unable to remove it completely. And since we know they keep growing, the problem may just end up coming back again. Um, we're very excited at the Children's Tumor Foundation to talk about the newest drug, Selumetinib, which is a drug that we helped to fund research 
where we demonstrated, the, the clinical trial demonstrated that 70% of participants showed a reduction in the size of their plexiform by 20 to 50%, which is an absolute first in the world of plexiforms and NF1. We have not seen a drug behave with this degree of efficacy um, in all the time that we've been doing this research. So we're really excited about it. It's been granted orphan drug status by the FDA here in the States. It's also been granted um, status in Europe. So it's a really exciting time, and we want to keep doing the, that hard work and keep researching because there's still so much more to learn. You know, 70% of patients having a good result is awesome, but we want 100% because you know here at CTF we want 100% of patients with no tumors. The, the whole goal of our foundation is to find the cure for NF in all of its forms, and that is something that we really believe we are going to be able to do. So. I hope this has been helpful today. I hope it triggered some questions. Maybe I said something that wasn't, isn't your experience and you wanna know, you know, why would she say that? This isn't how it's affected me or it's been different for me. I would love to hear from you. I think one of the things that I love best about my job is learning from you guys. So thanks again for joining us. I hope you'll tune in again next week.